My name is Ernie Humphrey. I'm the Vice President of Educational Programs for Performative, the largest online community and resource for corporate finance, accounting, and treasury and related professionals. First, I'd like to welcome everyone to the webinar, Financial, financial Consolidations and Reporting, the Alignment of People and Technology, Improving the Efficiency and Effectiveness of Financial Consolidations and Reporting can make a huge impact on the value that finance and accounting offer across the enterprise for any company. This efficiency is driven by the proper alignment or lack thereof between people and technology. Today's webinar will focus on best practices in aligning internal resources, building processes that facilitate cooperation with internal and external auditors, and current and emerging trends in the technology available to ease the enormous challenges posed in effectively and accurately consolidating company financial results across business units and borders and budgeting and forecasting for these entities. I'd like to thank Profix, whose commitment to thought leadership makes this event and available and delivered at no cost, like everything, on performative. First, a quick note on today's agenda. First, we will hear a presentation from Jeffrey Ang, focused on best practices in financial consolidation, in theory and in practice, and conclude with an interactive Q&A discussion, which I will moderate, where we will spend the remainder of our hour. We would like this to be an interactive experience for you, so if you have any questions at any time, please go to the questions area in your GoToWebinar control panel and send us your questions. We can't promise to get to all of them, but we will do our best and we'll follow up afterwards on any questions we did not get to. Before we get started, a few more logistical notes. We will post a presentation on the performative website where it will be freely available, and we will send you a link to the deck as well later this afternoon. We will also be offering CPE credits for the CPAs in today's audience. And on the final screen of our webinar this afternoon, there will be the contact information for those of you who did not check the box for CPE credits on the way into the webinar. A quick word about Performative. Performative is the largest and fastest growing online resource for senior level corporate finance, treasury, and accounting professionals. Performative offers a uniquely noise-free and valuable online peer network direct subject matter advice and features and resources developed in direct collaboration with our constituency. Okay, let's get started by introducing our first speaker, Jeffrey Yang, Vice President, Product Planning, Profix. Jeffrey is responsible for managing the long-term product and technology strategy for Profix products. He began his tenure at Profix as a management consultant implementing financial analytics systems at over 70 organizations throughout North America, including Mazda, Bridgestone Firestone, Lactane, Nelson, Education, Toyota Tushmu, and Pfizer. He most recently served as Profix Vice President of Professional Services, where he was deeply involved in the development of implementation best practices on the Microsoft SQL Server and Analysis Services platforms. Jeffrey holds an Honors Bachelor of Business Administration degree from New York University, Slich, School of Business with a concentration in management and information systems. With that, it is my pleasure to hand it over to Jeffrey Yang. Jeffrey, take it away. Thank you very much, Ernie. It's a pleasure to be here to speak to everybody on a very important topic, financial consolidation and reporting the alignment of people and technology. What we'll be, what we'll be talking about today are following topics. We'll talk about financial consolidation and how it relates to performance management. Understand a little bit about the challenges that are facing many of you because of the changing business landscape. Talk about how we can align processes with technology, in particular with uh, financial consolidation. And also I'd like to talk about some of the lessons learned in the field. These are some of the experiences that I've had from being a management consulting in the field and also working with um, customers and partners uh, in the field and also with other experts in the field of financial consolidations with how, how we can work together and use technology to improve a process that I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with and have uh, spent a lot of time working with. And then finally we'll, we'll have some time for questions at the end as well. So I'd like to start off with um, performance management aspect and financial consolidation is an integral component of performance management or often called core performance management, which really involves the following areas, budgeting and planning forecasting, uh, financial management reporting, generating your monthly reports, understanding the variances that go with um, your actuals to plan, also compiling your statutory 
uh, consolidated reports. Then there's also strategy management, profitability modeling and optimization where you're looking at profitability by, by different market segments or product lines. But really, what, one thing that we, we should, it's important to recognize that financial consolidation is a very important part of that process. And it's often a specialized process that's usually managed by a small team of accountants at corporate head office. But ever, however, what's important to know is that this process creates the audited uh, enterprise level view of information, financial information that must be shared with all of these other uh, components of performance management, analyze to get your, your plans and to get your variance analysis. However, what's important, what's interesting is that budgeting and planning and forecasting still remains a primary area of interest at companies looking at performance management. And there's not enough focus actually often on financial consolidations. And there's also opportunities to improve in these areas as well. And this is often a change that we as leaders uh, in finance within an organization must try to overcome. And ultimately, the, financial, the consolidated financial data uh, is used uh, for a variety of reasons. It's used to generate your, your consolidated profit and loss statements, the balance sheet, the cash flow. And this is the information that the management team is using to report the financial performance of an organization to your shareholders, to your regulators, to your market. So it's very, very important that we have a, uh, a good understanding of the process and best practices in place to ensure that the information that we create is, is credible, um, it's auditable, and paints the correct picture, an accurate picture of the organization's uh, results. So what are some of the things that are changing? Well, over the last decade, I think financial reporting landscape has seen significant change. Executives face a lot of pressure to increase the accuracy of financial reporting while also having reduced times for closing the financials. Uh, we've got regulatory agencies from both uh, in North America and abroad that have introduced more standards and rules to change what's required, what needs to be filed, the detailed information that goes along with it. There's new disclosures for public filings. Um, and also, I think, to complicate matters, finance organizations are being asked to do more with less. So you're being, that's uh, I think a common theme, especially in, in, the, in the current, in the current uh, economy. There's also greater demand for accuracy and accountability. Auditors are becoming um, much more stringent in looking at the overall process that, uh, that allows us to create the consolidated financial uh, information. We're also operating in a global operating environment where there are multiple sets of accounting rules. There are also changing accounting standards uh, and also emerging accounting standards that may play uh, potentially a significant role in affecting how we manage the financial consolidation process. By this, I'm talking about things like uh, international financial reporting standards, or IFRS, which has been adopted here in Canada. It's also in other parts of the world. It's also being uh, seriously looked at uh, in uh, the United States as well. So these are all things that uh, are affecting what we're what we're seeing with respect to financial consolidations and how we have to uh, look at ways of improving the processes so that we can meet all of these often uh, competing objectives. So really, in some some ways, what we're trying to do is avoid uh, some of the maybe the perfect storm with all these things coming to play, then we'll make sure that we can still manage and do our jobs and you know, add a lot of value to our organizations to ensure that this financial consolidation process is done in a, uh, an accurate and a timely manner. And when we talk about financial consolidation, the financial consolidation, if you break down some of the steps, it, it, it's really a systematic process that involves multiple steps of data capture, uh, calculations, um, and it can often be long and a time-consuming process. I've worked with organizations, uh, and I've been doing a lot of this uh, uh, as well in, in past lives. I've done, I've done through, I've, I've been in through these shoes. You know, you have to talk to people to collect the data. You apply your adjustments, things like currency conversion, complicate things, intercompany eliminations. You've got multiple companies with various ownership structures. You're making a lot of uh, calculations and adjustments. Data changes often happen frequently, especially when you are um, you have you're maybe acquiring companies or you've divested companies, and also 
management, senior management like to make changes to some of the objectives or the reporting objectives. And they say, well, I want you to cascade these changes down. You have to make some changes, make more adjustments. But one of the fundamental problems that you run into is there's often minimal documentation. A lot of these steps are, are still very manual. We're relying on a lot of spreadsheet-based systems or older generation standalone financial consolidation applications uh, to generate the consolidated financial reports. And also devoid of that is you don't have a, various, a very rigorous review and approval process in place to ensure that the information or the entire process can be audited. There's also a propensity um, to you know, have the knowledge be held within a small group, especially if you're in a, um, you know, a mid-market organization, a smaller organization. Uh, but even in large organizations, it's not uncommon. I've, I've been to organizations where there's only a few group of experts uh, who understand the consolidation process. And that itself, I think, presents multiple risk points uh, when you don't have a well-documented process, you don't have a documentation of what type of adjustments that you're going to be making, well then chances are you have risk for errors uh, in data entry, errors in creating the financial reports, and also error in managing some of the change requests that come through because there's no ability uh, to, to go back and audit some of these changes that have taken place. And the other thing is, I think, with financial consolidation, you often have a centralized approach where all these changes are taking place at corporate HQ. You really can't cascade a lot of that information back down to some of your subsidiaries or have the ability to monitor um, what's happening at some of your subsidiaries. So lots of risk points definitely in place. Uh, interesting to know, Performative actually conducted a uh, benchmark uh, in December where they obtained information and did a poll of organizations, both large, medium, and small, to understand how they are managing their monthly close process. And some of the numbers are, uh, are probably still surprising. You still see that it takes more than a week to close books at a large number of organizations. And more importantly, if you look on the right-hand side, um, does your company accept, use Excel or spreadsheets? A large number of companies still use spreadsheets as a consolidation solution, especially if you start segmenting into the medium and, and small organizations. So what we talked about earlier about you know, managing the process, having the controls in place, being able to identify the changes. Well, as, as, you, as you can all imagine, if we've all used Excel, I've used Excel and, I've used, and we use it in many different facets, but managing large sets of data, bringing data from multiple organizations uh, can be complex and it can be cumbersome. And really, we think that's an inadequate often to meet current challenges. And when I talk to um, CFOs, when I talk to finance directors, you know, they have the same impressions that they know that there's a problem in place, but how do we make changes? What are the steps that we have to do as an organization to break free of some of the limitations that are in place with, uh, with using spreadsheets. So one of the things that I talked about earlier is complex data management and, and why complex data management is really at the heart of when we talk about financial consolidation. One of the issues you see first is if you're consolidating data from one company, then you, maybe you don't have that much of a problem because you have one general ledger. Um, but if you're consulting data from multiple organizations where there may be disparate data sources or multiple GLs or ERPs in place, you have a problem because you don't have uh, a way of bringing in that data uh, from those uh, source systems. Often what we see are, again, we run an export from the source system onto an Excel spreadsheet, and then that gets manually transcribed or it gets copied into another set of spreadsheets. Uh, that performs some of the additional calculations or adjustments. Compounding matters is when you're dealing with multiple organizations, you often have no commonality in account structures, or you may have different financial calendars. I'm January, December. My subsidiary organization one is on a July to June type of a calendar. Well, there you run into issues. How do you map or manage the data flows? 
there's an inconsistent use of accounts often in place, and that can lead to inaccurate financial statements, especially if we don't understand how that information is being compiled together. You've also got unresolved eliminations. Intercompany elimination remains a big problem uh, when you have consolidations and multiple organizations that may sell to each other. How do you correct or eliminate uh, those uh, adjust or make adjustments and have intercompany matching and make the correct eliminations. Well, often you're doing that in a manual fashion, and you have to wait until the very end. You got to wait until subsidiary one closes their books because before you can even see their numbers. But when you don't have a common chart of accounts or you don't have a common set of hierarchical structures, it makes this problem. Um, it I think compounds this problem and it requires extended effort for reconciliations. Uh, furthermore. Again, you're using spreadsheets to manage all this, or maybe you're using one system with a combination of spreadsheets. There's no controlled mechanism for bringing this information in. And another issue is that you really, if you're at corporate HQ, which a lot of us work at, we're at the corporate HQ, we're, we get, we're sort of the recipients of the consolidated data. We have no visibility into what subsidiary one is actually doing at their end. We don't have the ability to go back into their systems to look at some of the information from their perspective. So therefore, we only get a high-level aggregated view of the data, and that creates more of a problem uh, when we are trying to uh, disseminate this information and find out what is exactly happening uh, at their end. And finally, you know, you're, we're also maintaining a lot of the mappings and validations manually. Again, we're maybe using some specialized tool or a combination of spreadsheets or maintaining or mapping using spreadsheet. Well, that's fine when you have one or two organizations, but when you multiply that and you have 20 or 30 odd subsidiaries of various sizes uh, that have various uh, consolidation consideration, that makes the, the data management process that much more complex. And you have to make sure that your mapping tables or your mapping rules are applied correctly and consistently across the board. And again, we don't have a team of 100 people doing this. Often it's, off, it's often a very small team within the uh, finance or uh, corporate accounting department that's doing this. It just becomes very unwieldy to manage. The global consolidation scope, we all, and I think most of us uh, work in organizations where we have interests abroad, either through subsidiaries or maybe through partnerships or joint ventures that have to be consolidated, uh, or we may even be much larger organizations where we have multiple levels of consolidation because we have multiple levels of uh, statutory reporting that we have to satisfy. We may have to satisfy reporting requirements in Europe, in the United States, maybe out in Australia. You've got multiple currency uh, that's being uh, in, in place here. You have to perform currency translation. But again, without a centralized or documentable process, we often run into situations where um, you know, the folks out in Europe are translating their results using one set of exchange rates, and the folks out in North America are using another set. And sometimes the, the differences are minute. You don't see them, but when you actually break down and audit the results, you do see that we're not using the same thing. Again, that re results in uh, unpredictable and inconsistent currency translation implications, especially when you're um, you know, calculating some of the, the currency differences. You want to dissect what are the, what are the reasons that you're getting uh, specific variances. We have to saw, satisfy multiple reporting jurisdictions. In Europe, they use IFRS, but in, in the US, we're using US GAAP. In Canada, we're using parts of IFRS. Sometimes we may even have to have dual reporting standards. Again, that's very difficult to satisfy those competing objectives when we don't have a structured consolidation process uh, and system in place. And again, we're often asked to generate these things uh, very quickly. We, we, don't, we don't have the luxury of waiting 30 or 40 days to generate these consolidated results. Often, stakeholders are demanding that these results be reported uh, very quickly, and often multiple times uh, throughout the month. They don't just want to wait until uh, the the end of the month. We're seeing more where uh, stakeholders may want to see the results halfway in the month. They want to do perform a, a soft close or simulated close where show me how the results as we showed today. We don't want to wait till the very end. So these things are, I think, challenges that compound the issues. 
We talked about limited participation. When you're using spreadsheets, you don't, you can't become very agile. There's not a lot of collaborations uh, involved. Where do we capture some of the more important disclosures that are, be, are being requested? Uh, the non-financial information, like the information of the commentaries that are very important. And that helps, again, mitigate risk. When you don't have these things, you don't have document adjustments, it can result in continuity problems. For example, if there's turnover organization, especially in the accounting group, if we have the experts leave, how do you train an incoming uh, accountant who's going to take over that role uh, in the process if we don't have that documentation or if we don't have visibility in, into what's been happening in some of these subsidiary organizations. Uh, that's, the, uh, I think, one of the number one issues that we've seen. So the traditional approach that we talked about earlier, uh, there's a heavy reliance on spreadsheets and flat file transfers. Now, larger companies may have implemented specialized products at corporate HQs, but often these products were implemented a long time ago, and they are maybe legacy pro products that are more technical uh, rather than targeted for a, a business use. You may have to require, uh, this might be a heavy reliance on IT to develop the business rules or the scripts or some of the to create the calculations. Um, products were often architecture or technology heavy and they're difficult to change. You're locked into a particular vendor or you're locked into a particular set of processes. You can't change them. There's often, we've often seen some companies use the consolidation capabilities of the general ledgers and that's because, you know, in the, in the late mid-90s or the, uh, a lot of ERP and GL companies added built-in financial consolidation functionality as part of their core application, usually to support things like currency translation, uh, consolidation across different companies. However, this approach has limitations. And one is that it requires incoming data to be in the format of the GL coding structures of your sort of corporate consolidation entity. And although this is not an issue if you have a common set of charter accounts across all of your organization, it does become problematic when subsidiaries use different chart of accounts or different financial calendars. Second, and probably more importantly, GLs and ERP systems often lack integrated reporting capabilities to generate formal financial statements or provide ad hoc views of the transactional data without resorting to, again, writing reports using technical tools and often relying on IT. Finally, your ERPs and your GLs are normally centralized applications that are really not designed for deployment to multiple locations or uh, multiple users uh, so that they can submit data in a controlled uh, fashion with supporting information such as your commentaries um, and, and details. The, I guess the other thing is often GLs are made for transactions and you're often processing lots of bad transactions at the end. Using Trying to use those for financial consolidations may also create some performance issues because you're, you're trying to do everything in one system uh, where really what you should be looking at is a uh, a, a consolidation system that's part of your performance management uh, strategy. So how do we align some of the processes with technology? As we saw, one of the things that I, I think is still very important is consolidation is a process that must not be formed in isolation. And that's one of the, I think, the uh, the pitfalls of some of the earlier systems or some of the mistakes that companies made when they uh, adopted uh, centralized consolidation systems. Um, consolidation must take global and local views. You can't just think about just, well, what are we doing at Corporate HQ without understanding what's happening at some of your subsidiaries. The business requirements also need to be understood across the entire organization. Within finance and also outside finance, especially from IT, they need to understand why, we're, why we need uh, improvement in some of these places because they have a a huge stake in this because IT is responsible for uh, the, data, the quality of the data and the information that's, uh, that's being fed from these different systems. It requires participation from different stakeholders. And that's important because if you don't have the participation of the stakeholders, especially maybe in your subsidiaries, you don't talk to them as to what we're doing at HQ, they get, they get turned off, they get tuned out there because they don't feel that they're part of the process um, and they just feel like it's, it's, it's a tool that they have to use, again, that's being driven by your corporate HQ, but that's not really allowing them to realize some of the benefits uh, locally. Uh, standardization 
uh, and consistency, I think, is also something that's very pivotal. Uh, we talk about how some companies have tried to standardize their charter accounts. We, I've seen this uh, a lot, and you know, I've talked to some of the uh, other CFOs at, at organization. They've seen this a lot where companies end up with proliferation of accounts. You've got so many different accounts and so many uh, accounts across different subsidiaries. There's no consistency to them. That makes consolidation more difficult. Ideally, you don't want to have proliferation of lots of accounts at different levels when you're doing your consolidation. You may want to map to a standardized chart of account, but you don't want this um, consolidated account to contain too many extraneous things that may have been used in one period and, and it's no longer being used. Often we say, go through uh, uh, an analysis of your current chart of accounts and how you would like to see it when you go to your consolidated chart of account. What are the requirements? What do you have to re report? for both statutory and for management reporting, and can you harmonize that chart of accounts so that you're not carrying maybe some of the bulk or the legacy things that you may have used historically but are no longer uh, in use today. One thing that we talk about is also federated solutions, which are really uh, sort of like, um, they're not centralized solutions, they're, cent they're solutions that have different points for different organizations to use, but it's still managed under the auspices of a, uh, an umbrella, an, a corporate umbrella, so that there's standardization, there's workflow, there's rules, but what allows the subsidiary organizations to also analyze their results in their own local GLs to ensure that details are not lost during consolidation. So some technology considerations to consider. Because financial consolidation is not purely a technological um, challenge, it's, mu it's, it's much more process driven really than technologies, we want to make sure that you, you, you're looking for technology that's flexible, you want to determine the flexibility of existing solutions. As I said, many companies already have maybe parts of uh, a performance management solution in place or they may be considering implementation of a performance management solution for budgeting, planning, and forecasting. Well, some of the questions to ask would be, can that same solution be extended to handle financial consolidation? Will it allow you to do things like uh, manage the data or allow you to create more of a federated system so that your subsidiaries can also participate in uh, the consolidation process and also consult, participate in the planning process? We recognize that spreadsheets alone provide poor data governance and become unmanageable uh, very quickly. Uh, they're not very good at uh, making changes. It's not very agile. You become fixed. They're great if you're just looking at one spreadsheet or two spreadsheets at a time, but when you combine lots of them and you put formulas in them, it just becomes an unmanageable mess. The other thing I think that's important is look for multi-purpose reporting requirement capabilities when you're looking at the type of technology. And this is brought on because of things like IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, where you have multiple reporting considerations. You may have to report one way for IFRS for Europe or for you know, what I call rest of the world, but in the US we're still using US GAAP, um, and we have to be able to capture different sets of adjustments and also generate different sets of reports. Um, so that's very important. Also think about the technology uh, for capturing additional disclosures and commentaries. As we said, the process um, and getting to the numbers is not the most important thing. When you talk to your auditors, they will always want to know what's the context behind uh, the adjustments that you're making. Why are you making certain adjustments? What's the disclosure uh, that you want to communicate to your auditors, to stakeholders? How does the auditor uh, really go back and see how you arrived at a particular uh, consolidated number. They want to see that um, type of a, adjustment, what, look at a trail of, of the adjusted results. If you can provide that to them, you know, then you're really in heaven. It makes your auditing, your audit experience much more streamlined uh, and, and straightforward because you have all this information in place. And I can't say enough about a unified solution, which I'll talk more about after, but I think that really has uh, a lot of benefits when you start thinking about a broader picture of um, driving performance management across your organization. A partnership between business and IT is very ideal. Although financial consolidation is often perceived to be a highly specialized process only for 
accountants and members of the finance department, there is a, a component uh, which involves IT. We're often tasked to manage the overall data flows between multiple systems and the location. Your, your CIO and your, your IT team are really the stewards often between, for the data that's within your, your organizations and the subsidiaries, what's sitting in the general ledgers or your ERP system. That's why it's important for a meaningful partnership to be developed between finance and IT. They need to understand the overall objectives of a financial consolidation improvement project. And when they do, IT can be very helpful and supportive part of the process. And they can provide recommendations that can actually support and reinforce uh, some of the improvement objectives that you want to drive within the organization. So when both sides sit down and actually map for a project and map out the business requirements, internal and external data flows, and how people make decisions and combine this data, we often see very successful collaborations can occur, uh, leading to big wins for the organization. And this is where that true partnership uh, comes into play. And you know, I've, I've seen it myself when I was doing consulting. Uh, when you see that partnership between business and IT, well, then I think you really are, you know, that's sort of the, the nirvana that you want to achieve. And, and I think that will then create the benefits that, that we, what we strive, strive for. So the unified solution, um, coming back to that point, I think unified solutions are pivotal to help minimize really the amount of data transfers required to move from your original source data to applying your conditional logic, such as currency conversion, eliminations, minority interest calculations to the financial consolidation statements. If you're using uh, point solutions for each of these processes, you end up having potentially duplication of data, um, and you don't really, and again, you run into um, you know, data synchronization issues. I think historically, when multiple systems were involved, uh, not everything could be uh, highly automated, resulting in still remnants of manual procedures to move data between say the consolidation system and the reporting system. But I think what's more important is that data from the consolidation system, which is used to generate your uh, consolidated financial statements and, and some of your reports, are then used as inputs into the budgeting and forecasting systems, or budgeting and forecasting processes. And again, if you, if you don't have a unified system, you may have to uh, move data around or in, export data and import data using you know, I, hope to, hope to, I don't want to say it, but potentially you might be using uh, flat files or spreadsheet files. And we've seen that before where they have one consolidation systems in place, and one, you know, one vendor, and then you have another uh, system that's in place for planning, or budgeting from uh, uh, that's not incompatible with each other, and you're moving data around. So the introduction, I think, of excessive data movement introduces risk uh, in the process because there's a possibility of incorrect data being moved. Uh, but when it's part of a unified system, all the required data will reside in a single source that can be shared between the various applications, provides a much stronger foundation for you know, master data management of, the, of your uh, operational hierarchies and also chart accounts. Uh, the other thing is I think if you have other business intelligence and analytical applications, uh, they could also leverage this master data as well. So using a unified application makes it easier to incorporate performance management, which includes consolidation as, as part of a broader uh, analytics uh, or potentially even a, a BI strategy if you have that in place uh, in your organization. The one thing that's, that I like to stress is what you get with the unified system is also unified reporting and analysis. And that's really having a single point of entry to all your relevant data. If you're looking at a financial statement, saying you're looking at a very, you know, on the, on the left hand side here, you're looking at your consolidated balance sheet or your consolidated income statement or cash flow statement, um, but you then want to dive in and see some of the details. Again, if you're just using, if this is just a static report that's from generated from one system, you're often unable to break that information down um, and examine the data from multiple perspectives, like pivot the information. Many of you have used pivot tables, and that's really an ex, uh, a spreadsheet or an Excel application or functionality. But having that capability as part of a unified solution 
so that you can move from a consolidated balance sheet that's looking at one organization to a segmented balance sheet where you're looking across multiple organizations and then drilling down and looking at the comments to explain your adjustments to even drilling down to the transactional details, you know, the actual debits and credits that may have been uh, entered so that you can really have a audible uh, driven chain to the reports to your ultimate from your ultimate reports to your detailed data can be very powerful and think of the time that you can save if you're sitting with an auditor and the auditor questions why these adjustments or why these eliminations eliminations are being made at your corporate level and you say okay let's break that down for you uh, mr. auditor let's take it down to the level where we can see what are the what, what's the reasons or the implication that we made this adjustment? When did we make them? What currencies did we make them in? Um, at the transactional level, that's very powerful information. It saves you a lot of time from having to go back into your, your the big books or the report binders where you've written all this down. And it also allows you to make changes quickly and ripple that back um, through so that you can see the results as you make some of these uh, changes, allowing to have that agility that we've been striving. We all know that it takes consolidation is often an iterative process. We make changes, we look at the results, we may not be satisfied with results, or our our stakeholders may question the results. Often we want to be able to make changes and then see the uh, the consolidated reports um, immediately, but then also to look at it from different perspectives. So what are some strategies if you're thinking about um, driving a consolidation a process change across your organization, what are some things that you might want to think about? Um, you may have a system in place, you may not. Well, one of the things that, from my experience, that we've seen that's, that's uh, important and I think that's useful is use a multi-phased approach. You don't have to do everything at once. You may want to start from a phase one perspective to start at a, you know, start consolidation, again, maybe at your group level, but still involve your subsidiaries in, 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 the, in the discussions, the design, the scoping phase, so that they have an understanding of what's taking place at Corporate HQ. But instead of using spreadsheets to manage the data collection from your subsidiaries, use the consolidation system to, um, to have controlled submissions of data or direct imports from the subsidiaries and right? map to a consolidated chart of accounts. Uh, ensure that you have the ability then to automate some of your bookings, adjustments, your recurring entries, um, your minority interest calculations for the generation of your consolidation uh, systems. So this federated approach where you have a centralized consolidation system focused on legal entity but supported by um, you know, the local subsidiaries is very, very important. Make sure that they are involved in the process. What you don't want to do is choose something at HQ, and then all of a sudden at your next controller meeting, tell them, okay, everybody has to use this. And they'll be wondering, well, you know, just like I'd be wondering, what's in it for me? You're asking me to force me to use a certain format that I'm familiar with. How does it help me? But if you implement the system, get them involved, you know, make sure they, maybe they can then also participate in the generation of the, the reports. They can get reports locally. They can get it maybe in their formats. Uh, they can also participate in the budgeting and planning forecast. They then see the value that's involved in this, and you get some early wins early on. From a phase two perspective, with the federated system, you can roll out the consolidation system regionally with direct links to your local GLs. Once you have the fundamental process in place, you move towards incorporating a system where the subsidiaries will use the corporate charter account structures, but also keep their own local charter accounts and segments such as if they have things like products or cost centers that are not universal. This gives them a link to the central consolidation system through your uh, centralized mapping, but also maintains a link to the local management uh, reporting structure. And this approach leverages the mapping capabilities of your centralized or unified consolidation system, which provides a level of master data management and are much more flexible than those found in a GL-based uh, system or spreadsheets. Uh, they also give uh, the corporate headquarters uh, group line of sight visibility really into what's happening 
uh, at your subsidiaries. So you can monitor um, what's happening at your subsidiary, but at the same time, you're still automating the creation of local and group consolidation statement. And once you have it in this process, well, now you're, the benefits of the system and the automation accrues to your subs as well. They can use the same system to consolidate their data from their GL, generate the reports, apply their entries, work with their local auditors to make sure that they're in compliance. Um, and you really have a, a global consolidation system uh, in place. And in addition, as I said earlier, this also provides the links into the planning and budgeting system that you may have if you have a unified solution enabling a more strategic approach to uh, in, into driving performance management across your organization. So what are some of the realized benefits, having said that? Well, we're, we're really striving to mitigate risk and reduce errors. We want to provide a framework for governing consolidation that is both accurate and audible, and that's very important. We want to provide an audible statement of record so that, again, we can drill back uh, into in, from a high-level picture into the details to have a audible transaction of what adjustments or calculations have been applied to the data, or concurrency conversions have been applied to the data to arrive at your consolidated financial statement that's being presented to stakeholders. We want to be able to allow finance and accounting to devote more time to analysis rather than managing data quality and consistency. We want to automate regular and recurring consolidation tasks. And we want to have the agility to respond to changes and requirements of regulatory uh, environments. And that, I think, is one of the, the pivotal things, this concept of agility. Things are changing so rapidly. Rules change a lot. There's new, you know, we always hear about emerging trends and disclosures that need to be placed. There's new drafts, especially when you're operating in a global environment. What's happening in Europe? may affect what's happening in North America and vice versa. And even what's happening in places like Australia or China may have an impact on what we do here. So we need to be able to quickly change gears, if you will, so that we can facilitate new reporting objectives that management may impose on us and respond accordingly. And also keep multiple versions of that data, because often we're just experimenting with uh, you know, whether or not we should be consolidating a company or not consolidating a company because there would be tax implications. So this experimentation or having a scenario-based uh, and that's audible consolidation process uh, becomes very, very important. So I want to close off with some lessons learned. And this is really from some of our my experience with working with organizations and also talking to CFOs across North America and around the world uh, from both medium and large, medium, small, and large organizations on the things that they've done and what they've told us uh, that has made them successful, or maybe made them not successful. Um, and these are some of the lessons learned I want to share with everybody. One is to ensure buy-in from executive management. Uh, oftentimes, you know, if, if executive management is not on board or they don't see the value of why we're uh, replacing an existing system, uh, they, you know, they can't be, they can't help support the process. And I think it's very, very important to have that executive management buy-in. I think if you, uh, if you, if you start th framing consolidation within the, the larger performance management um, uh, uh, vision, then I think your executive management will have a better understanding of what we're trying to do because. Those are things that affect them when you talk about things like profitability, analyzing profitability. Well, all these things still have to, or your data still has to come somewhere. If you can't trust the data, you're really your plans and your forecast can't be accurate. So I think that's very important. You want to take a global view, clearly define your business requirements. Don't just look at what's happening in North America or what's happening at corporate HQ. Take that global view. Uh, involve your senior finance, accounting, and IT leadership from your subsidiaries to understand what are the data flows, what are the, the perceived issues, what, and focus on the issues, problem areas, not symptoms. A lot of times people make a lot of noise, um, but they're just really looking or they're encountering symptoms 
And really what we have to drive across as leaders is how do we evaluate and analyze some of these symptoms so that we can get to the root cause. Uh, early on, establish clear roles and responsibilities so that we can understand who is doing what. Um, this will also help you to come up with that process map for financial consolidation, who's responsible for what. Again, it's again driving that documentation of procedures. One thing we've learned and that people told us is that understanding and cleaning data is the most complicated and time-consuming part of the implementation. When you're performing uh, an implementation of a consolidation system or you're going through all the data, you often see things that other people don't see. And trying to understand that is, is very, very important. Ensure that you work with your IT group and make them part of the process. That cooperation is extremely important. Use an incremental or phased approach. I always say it's not about uh, initiating uh, an a revolution within the company, but evolve it. Have an evolutionary process so that people can learn about the benefits, uh, that we can have small wins and communicate that within the organization, and they can also have time to catch up, if you will, because there's so many things changing at once. What people are afraid of most is when you initiate wholesale change across the organization, especially if it's something that they did not participate in. Finally, keep your solution simple. Sort of the KISS principle still applies. You don't have to automate everything right up front. You don't have to uh, try to do everything at once. In fact, that's often a recipe for failure because what you end up with um, if you try to do everything at once is scope creep. You know, you end up with you end up with situation where everybody thinks they want to do something, or you see, oh, what if I do this, and then I can benefit this this group, um, and that's that often results in scope creep. You don't finish the solution. It's more important to finish um, your implementation or have have at least phase one complete, so that you can have some quick wins. Uh, so you can align those initiatives uh, with your uh, broader objectives. And then you can show the the progress that's that's being made. So I would say, I think that in closing, I would say that it's important that we work together. Work with work with your CFO. If you're a CFO, work with your CIO. Work with IT. Um, and also involve your subsidiaries as well as part of this discussion. I think some of the, the most successful implementations of financial consolidation systems when there's been a, a partnership uh, between all the various groups. And as I said, keep that solution simple. Don't go for the all-encompassing big bang solution for everything because ultimately it's not going to work. You're going to run into more of Scope Creek as opposed to being able to uh, implement that solution and have those quick wins. Okay, so as I said earlier, the performance management cycle uh, does include financial consolidation uh, and it's very, I think, beneficial so that when you think about your deployment to, to view that within that context and see if you can um, look for a unified a solution or a unified application to bridge all of these areas. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over back to Ernie uh, so that we can take some questions. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. That was outstanding content. Um, at this point, we're going to launch our polling questions as we dive into the Q&A. We would appreciate your participation in the polling questions. Uh, please note, for those of you in today's audience who are after CPE credit today, you will need to answer both of the polling questions uh, that we are going to uh, put up during the Q&A session. Again, if you have any questions uh, you would like to ask answered, answered by Jeff, please ask it in the questions area in your GoToWebinar control panel outro. Again, I'm going to go ahead and get the Q&A started um, in the sake of time as we launch the polling question. So Jeff, um, just a little bit of insight if you could give us, how do you create buy-in when you need to change processes, procedures, and technology um, that involve colleagues across departments and also uh, across borders? Excellent question. I think the main thing is, as I said earlier, is to take a collaborative approach. 
Um, and as you're early on, as you're even in the, in the, in the process of considering a, a process um, evaluation, solicit the feedback from, from all the different groups, from your subsidiaries, get them involved. Uh, if you have annual controllers meetings or if you have meetings uh, on a regular basis with your different uh, corporate accountants, get them involved in that process. Have that, have that dialogue early so that they understand the issues and listen to them. We often, you know, I think I, I especially I, I work in product and I also have worked as a consultant, we often accused of not listening. Well, listening is very important. Well, let's listen to what uh, the, the folks at, at the subs are encountering, what are the problems that they're encountering. I think if they feel that they're part of the process and they see the value in the change that you're hoping to affect, they'll very much buy into it. And as I said, the other thing is get the quick, in, quick wins in. Don't go for the big bang projects. Um, if they see the, that, oh, hmm, corporate HQ is being able to have some of their time, maybe this will affect me as well. Maybe I can take advantage of that. So I think that's one way to get the buy-in. The other thing, as I said, collaborate with IT often because IT are your stewards of the data. They need to be involved in, in the process as well, and I think they bring a lot of uh, value and experience, work with a lot of very skilled and talented IT folks who have a great understanding and appreciation of financial consolidation because they work with finance so heavily and, and get them involved. And there's a lot of IT folks who want to know more about this because they're also looking at ways of how they can add value back into the organization. Okay, great. Um, I have another question for you. Um, in general, um, from your experience, uh, what do you see as what you would say are the three most common mistakes that you see companies making um, when look when companies how they're closing their books um, how are they kind of uh, getting in their own way so to speak uh, great question uh, and there's yeah I think I, I touched upon some of these earlier there's there's a lot of um, you know mistakes that I've seen people make or challenges one is I think taking a local view versus a broader corporate or global view is again where we're focusing so much on how do we improve things at corporate HQ or within the, the group consolidation area that we're not taking a look at the broader the broader uh, the broader world rest of the world if you will and what's the challenge they're facing there how can we streamline processes uh, in those areas because ultimately those things will trickle down uh, to corp as well if we don't improve them then they won't be able to get you the data any earlier uh, not having a well documented process with roles and responsibility um, especially if knowledge of the process resides with a single individual and there are no backups. That's just a really business continuity risk management uh, perspective that's important to take. If that person ever leaves the organization, then especially a smaller organization or a medium smaller size organization when there aren't that many people to begin with, who's going to take over that consolidation process? And it often becomes a mad scramble uh, to figure that out. And you don't want to be training someone new in real time uh, as you're also learning the process yourself. I think finally using myriad of tools and I think applications instead of carefully evaluating the business requirements and selecting a unified system that can support all the, the data collection, process management, adjustments, and formal reporting. And I think tying that back to your formal performance management procedures and objectives I think is, uh, is something that should not be overlooked. Okay, great. Um, someone's asking a, a question a little bit on the software application side. Um, do you know are there software applications out there that that help companies um, stay up and implement changes in accounting standards, uh, maybe such as uh, IFRS or even a little bit uh, uh, less down the a little bit deeper down uh, new revenue recognition um, standards? Do you know of? Yeah, certainly. I think. A lot of the consolidation systems, and, and in broader, even you know, the, the consolidation systems or applications that are part of CPM solutions, they often have a lot of um, linkages and, and pre-built logic in place for things like IFRS, uh, revenue recognition, different accounting standards. One thing to look for is the ability to maintain different versions of the data, and I think that's uh, very important. Here in Canada, a lot of organizations have just completed sort of their transition to IFRS, which is what we use uh, in Canada and also in parts of Europe. They did that a couple years back. But 
Canadian companies often have to still report in the U.S. SEC, which is using U.S. GAAP, being able to have multiple versions of that information that have different application of the standards in place is important because that allows you to have comparisons between old and new. And so it's definitely important to make sure that you're able to track some of those changes. A lot of applications also have starter packages in place where they, you know, if, if your companies in Europe, they're looking at how can I get up to speed with IFRS reporting quickly, or if I'm a U.S. company looking to file in Europe, how do I get up to speed with IFRS? They have some of those um, pre-built logic in place for handling that type of thing. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, someone's um, asking a question, you know, uh, around the economics of um, adopting such a solution. So this person, you know, has worked at larger organizations where they've been able to afford uh, this technology, so to speak. Uh, has there been a change um, in the economics of adoption, um, given some recent advances in, in the cloud applications and other related technology? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think what I talked about earlier. Um, you know, if, this, if we're in the mid '90s or early or late '90s, uh, we're talking about the specialist systems. Those used to cost, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars, million dollars when you add, you, know, you add, you know, implementation costs, etc. And they're also not very flexible. They weren't meant to be managed by a combination of your business folks and your local IT folks as well. Economics certainly have changed. I think there are a lot more solutions that are. Uh, unified solutions that are that are in the market today that offer a wealth of functionality, not just financial consolidation, but that that you know the performance management cycle that we see, or the functionality that's part of the performance management cycle, and that's very very affordable. And there are also applications where you can implement only what you need. You don't need to have again, it's the big bang approach versus an evolutionary approach. Implement what you need, and a lot of time because you can deploy in things like the cloud. You can also, you know, you have solutions that have been what you know what organizations will say has been you know productized. A lot of that logic for performing consolidation has been built into the application, so that you're not building a lot of customized screens or scripts or you know uh, business logic that you had to many years once upon a time. That's all now out of the box, it's just configuring it to, to match your organization. A lot of them even provide reports. And once that's done, in a, you know, often in a couple of weeks, you can get up to speed and your finance department takes over and away you go. So I think the cost benefit of uh, a consolidation application has changed dramatically uh, in the last five to 10 years. Certainly in the last few years, uh, you know, with uh, a lot of the unified applications that are in the marketplace and also some of the new deployment standards such as your cloud. Great. We're going to close um, um, with one more question. I think it's a commentary. Uh, Jeff, someone's asking us to share the second poll results. So I'm going to go ahead um, and share sure. those results. Uh, if you just, you know, would like to um, comment on those, uh, you know, across those four areas. So you said, you know, we might take an incremental approach. If someone's taking an incremental approach, which of these uh, four areas do you think that that will have the biggest impact on out of the gate, so to speak? Uh, I think the incremental approach will have, I think in all areas, it will touch all areas, but certainly I think with your, your rules and reporting regulations, sort of that time operation in the global environment, those two are quite important. Um, the disclosure and supporting documents, well, that's, Obviously, that's since the beginning of time. It's it's very difficult to manage your your supporting details or your, your disclosures when you don't have a uh, a unified system in place. When you're still spending too much time chasing the data as opposed to having a systemized approach. Uh, so, I, as I said, I think the rules and reporting disclosure, all those areas, I think, will touch with both your um, your incremental approach, but certainly, I think. You know, more rules and standards in the operation of global environment are, are key. The first three, I think, are certainly going to be ones that you'll hit just by starting off. Um, you know, with what phase one we talked about. It's it's okay, it doesn't take great. long, I think, to realize those benefits. Sure, great. Um, thank you very much. Uh, with that, um, I'd like to Pleasure. thank Jeff Ang for his time and insight. Great content. If you'd like us to connect you uh, with Jeff. Um, please indicate that on your survey that we will invite you to take on the pop-up screen just after this, the webinar concludes. Jeff is a leader in his field and an excellent source of information um, on today's topic. 
Our thanks again to today's sponsor, Profix. Uh, as a reminder for CPE credit, those of you who did not check the box on the way in, you will see the contact information for Dawn Moore. Uh, in, order, in order to receive the CPE certificate, if you have any issues, please contact her. Uh, again, please note we'd appreciate your feedback regarding our event today. And finally, I'd like to conclude today's webinar by thanking you, the audience, for your valuable time. And we hope to see you on performative.com and future events. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you very much.